Today we're diving into how much it really costs to live in Charleston, South Carolina. Since my last video on this, the price of everything has gone up, so this will be a much better reflection of the costs here. I'll cover everything from housing costs to gas prices, taxes, and more. First, let's start with housing, which is the biggest part of the cost of living puzzle. In 2024, Charleston's housing market remains competitive. For a single family home in the greater Charleston area, the median sales price is about $405,000. However, broken down into the different counties, which we call the tri-county area of Berkeley, Charleston, and Dorchester, Charleston County is the most expensive. The median sales price for Charleston County homes is $560,000, whereas Berkeley County is only $376,000 and Dorchester is $362,000. To give you a better idea of the areas and their costs, I'll go through the most and least expensive areas. The most expensive areas here are Daniel Island, Isle of Palms, Kiowa, Sullivan's Island, downtown Charleston, and Mount Pleasant. The least expensive areas are of course going further away from downtown Charleston, heading into some of the rural areas outside of the city. So we have the Dorchester Road Corridor, which is near North Charleston and Somerville, then Goose Creek and Monk's Corner, Greater North Charleston, the Greater Somerville area, Hanahan, and St. George slash the rural Dorchester County. So as you can see here, there's a wide range of prices. Compared to the state average, the housing costs in Charleston are about 20% higher, but compared to the national average, data shows that it's 2% lower. If you're looking to rent instead of buy, here's a graph of the different rental prices by bedroom size. So for a studio apartment in Charleston, you're looking at about $1,500 a month, for a two bedroom, about $1,800, a three bedroom, about $2,000 or more, and a four bedroom, around $2,800 on average. This shows that the rent in Charleston is higher than South Carolina and the United States. But as you can see, when you compare it to the Charleston, North Charleston area, it brings it much closer to the United States average. It basically all comes down to location. So if you're looking to live in prime downtown, it'll of course come with a higher price tag. Living here can also mean planning for hurricanes and flooding. So flood insurance might be an expense you're not used to, and it's typically anywhere from $500 to $1,500 a year, but it totally depends on the flood zone and house elevation. Also, if you own a historic home, the cost of maintenance there can be more expensive. Now let's talk about property taxes, which is a big part of owning property here. We actually have one of the lowest property taxes in the United States. Our effective property tax rate is about 0.52%. So for a $400,000 house, taxes would be about $2,000 a year. If you're coming from somewhere like New York or California, you'll probably be ecstatic to hear that. However, one caveat to that is that if you're looking to purchase property in Charleston as an investment property, second home, or anything other than a primary residence, your taxes will be triple. So basically for a $400,000 investment property or second home, you're looking at about six to $7,000 in property taxes instead. That's because here in South Carolina, taxes are assessed at a 6% rate. But if you live in a home as your primary residence, you can apply for an exemption to get that down to 4%. This can make a big difference if you're looking at the cost of housing in Charleston. And of course, when you're renting, you won't have to pay these property taxes, but these are all factored into your rent payment. Now let's talk about some of the day-to-day -day expenses that you'll experience living in Charleston. According to this data, it says utility prices are 17% higher here than the national average, with an average energy bill being about $206 a month even though Charleston housing expenses are lower than the national average. Another site said your energy bill might be about $230 a month. But of course, this depends on the size of the home you're heating and cooling. This higher utility price might be because of the hot summers that we get. Your air conditioning will have to work hard to combat the hot, humid summers. And the winters here do get cold enough that you'll have to kick on the heat. But most people find that they are using their air conditioning year round. I also found that the cost of grocery prices are higher here than the national average too. Here it says Charleston has grocery prices that are 3% higher than the national average. In my opinion, this greatly varies depending on which grocery stores you're shopping at. We have a plethora of grocery stores, so if you're looking to save money on groceries, you could always shop at places like Walmart, Harris Teeter, Publix. We also have stores like Costco, Sam's Club, along with Trader Joe's, Loaves Foods, and more. While if you don't mind spending more on organic groceries, for example, we have Whole Foods, Earth Fair, and more. Here's a list of different grocery prices based on a cost of living index. Here it shows bread at about $4, milk about $3 a gallon, eggs under $3 a dozen, and it has more things like bananas, coffee, and other essentials. And then speaking of day-to-day -day expenses, sales taxes add up. So we actually have a pretty high sales tax rate of 9% combined. The South Carolina sales tax rate is currently 6%. And then you're tacking on another 3% for county and city sales taxes. So every time you go to buy something, there'll be a 9% tax on it. Now let's talk about transportation costs. Public transport does exist, but it's a lot less comprehensible than other big cities. We do have a bus system, but most people commute with cars, as the greater Charleston area is not the most pedestrian and bike friendly either. 
gas prices though will probably make it worth it because our average hovers at about $2.9 a gallon. Of course, we're susceptible to all of the nationwide gas prices fluctuating, but we tend to be below the national average. According to AAA, the national average gas price is about $3.15, whereas South Carolina is about $2.91. I haven't seen it go above $3 a gallon in a while, so I am grateful for that. And as you'll see, in Charleston, we have the highest gas prices of the state. And then as you go further out, the price just gets lower. That's for regular gas. So if your car requires mid-grade, premium, or diesel, the current average right now for premium gas is about $3.69. And then for diesel, it's about $3.76 a gallon. The next cost I wanted to talk about is dining and entertainment. This will vary greatly too, depending on which area of Charleston you're in, as downtown Charleston is known as a major food hub and has some very high-end, expensive restaurants. But throughout the greater Charleston area, we have plenty of chains and more reasonably priced local restaurants. If you're dining at a mid-grade restaurant around Charleston, I would say the average would probably be about $70 for two people, which would include entrees, maybe a drink or two, and then the tip. Honestly, not eating out here can be hard since there are so many great restaurants to try. So having a higher food budget might be an important part of living in Charleston. And as far as things to do in the area, there are plenty of free things like walking around historic downtown, running or walking the Ravenel Bridge, going to a number of parks, watching the sunset along the water, and more. But if you like things like movies and concerts, you'll find that our prices are about in line with the average. Movie tickets are about $10 a person. Tickets to the South Carolina Aquarium are about $35 a person and a ticket to the Charleston Museum is about $15, just to give you some examples of pricing. And that's not including discounts for children, military, or seniors. Another great part about Charleston is that the healthcare is 6% below the national average, and we have a number of highly rated hospital systems. Here is a list of the average cost of different types of doctors. Overall, Charleston offers a great quality of life for the cost of living. While certain costs are higher than the national average, other costs are lower, making it a pretty competitive place to live with all the fun things to do. Now we've gone through a lot of the expenses, you're probably wondering how much people make here. The median income for the greater Charleston area is about $80,000. Now if you're moving here from a different area, I highly recommend NerdWallet's cost of living calculator. This can help you figure out how far that income would go. So if you make around the median income here of $80,000, but you compare that to New York City, you'd have to make $115,000 to have about the same quality of life. Housing costs in New York are about 139% higher, transportation 19% higher, food 11% higher, pretty much everything is higher. So again, this is a great tool to estimate the cost of living, but if you have any specific questions about Charleston, of course I'm here to help. Thanks for joining me today. If there's anything I missed that you're curious about the cost of, just comment below and you could head here for more things to know about living in Charleston, South Carolina.